Hey, what's up everybody? Pastor Matt here. Thanks for checking into my YouTube channel. So have you ever, here's a question for you. Have you ever read really far afield from your particular strike zone? Um, what I mean by that is this, like we all have particular genre of literature that we like the most. Some of you are uh, you're, you're fiction fans, Lord of the Rings, whatever. Uh, some of you are romance novel people. I don't understand why you would be, but whatevs. Uh, some of you are theology buffs. You're totally into Burkhoff and Bavink and all that. Others of you like historical theology. Of course, I'm a Jonathan Edwards guy here. Um, but we all probably have certain types of literature that we really, really love the most. But my question for you is, do you ever read really outside of your strikes? And I mean something that's so far afield from what you're used to, what you're good at, what you love. That's a real challenge for the mind. Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. This is Matthew Everhart here. I'm the pastor of Gospel Fellowship PCA. We're a Reformed Bible-believing church just north of Pittsburgh. If you're looking for a church like that, you found one. Well, let me tell you about some reading way outside of my field that I've been doing lately to the great challenge and benefit of my mind, I think. Um, now, obviously, my, my scholarship is in the field of Jonathan Edwards. I spend so much time reading through Jonathan Edwards. The books that I've written have been about Edwards. My encyclopedia articles are about Edwards. My chapters that I've contributed to uh, scholastic forums are all about Ev Edwards. That's what I do. I'm an Edwards guy. And um, recently, what I found is that um, I had been reading so much Jonathan Edwards that I just needed to take some kind of a break. Now, I had just finished one of his books, again, called Some Thoughts Concerning the Revival. It's Edwards's mature reflections back on the Great Awakening. And I did something that I've never done before as I was reading Some Thoughts on the Revival, and that is that I actually outlined the entire book as I went. This is a really good practice for reading comprehension, by the way. If you ever want to read a book and totally comprehend it, not just a you know, buzz through it, um, but to really understand it, try outlining it as you go. It's a real challenge. You'll go way slower like molasses, but I outlined the entire book, Some Thoughts Concerning the Revival, and I'm about to do it again. I'm about to do it with uh, a faithful narrative and distinguishing marks, which thankfully are quite short compared to some thoughts. But um, as far as the experiment and learning goes, outlining an entire book was really, really good to me. And, and not only that, but most of my time as I'm reading, I'm very often thinking about how this material is going to be reproduced, repackaged, um, reformatted in the form of sermons, lectures, teaching series, and scholastic or academic articles that I'm going to write. So as I was going through some thoughts um, on the revival, I realized like, man, I just can't stop thinking about prepping a class on this. I'm going to be prepping a class on this for the future. And that doesn't necessarily lend itself to a lot of reading enjoyment. And so when I finished some thoughts and I knew I had to go on to do the same thing with the faithful narrative and distinguishing marks, I thought, you know, I'm gonna take a mental break. I'm gonna take a mental break because I need it. And what I really want is to just read something that is outside of my zone, something I'm not good at, something I don't know very well. And that'll just take me off of the teaching, prepping, writing, academicing kind of course that my brain naturally wants to go to. So I'm thinking, okay, what am I gonna read? I want something short, because I don't wanna commit a year. <laughs> this is a break, not a new journey for me. A break, not a new journey. And so I looked over and on my shelf, my wife, sweet as she is, she had gotten me this book right here. This is The Collected Poems of Emily Dickinson. I looked at it many times, um, never picked it up, never once. Looked at it, sometimes it calls my name, I put it right back on the shelf, flip through it, put it back, glance through it, put it back. Finally, um, Emily Dickinson called out to me, <laughs> to me from the grave. I'm kidding, of course. But I thought, yep, today's a day. Today is a day I'm going to read Emily Dickinson. Now I had remembered her from high school and even more so from college. I took a lit class, literature class in college where every day the professor gave us quizzes on what we had read so there's no way we could skip our readings. We had to do our readings. And I remember reading a few things from Emily Dickinson 
Uh, but I thought, you know, this is it. This is a perfect mental break for me outside of my strike zone. For one, I read very little poetry except biblical poetry. The Psalms, Isaiah, all that stuff is biblical poetry, but it works different because it's Hebrew poetry from English poetry. So this is clearly outside of my strike zone. Second, she is a, uh, a woman and not to, be, uh, not to be super diversity training guy or anything like that. But honestly, most of the people that I read are men. Uh, Edwards and Calvin and uh, Warfield and Burkhoff and those kinds of guys. So I thought, you know, probably wouldn't hurt me, even though I'm not Mr. Diversity Training, to, to read a woman from time to time. Uh, not only that, but almost everybody I read is a Christian, and Emily Dickinson's faith is somewhat doubtable. It's not really clear what she believed or why she believed it, though we're going to look here in just a moment at something that um, would, would suggest her faith. Uh, but not only that, um, but thankfully, and this is the real benefit here, is her poems are very, very short. Very short. Any one poem, two minutes. But the question is, will you understand it? And that's been the real challenge with Emily Dickinson. So they're brief, they're short, they're delightful. Let me give you a couple reasons why I think reading outside of your strike zone is probably a good idea. Number one, because we all need to read generally. Um, we should all be, even those of us who like to be experts on one thing, we should all be generalists when it comes to understanding the whole panoply of literature that's out there. So even if you're super moored into one particular thing, you should expand your horizons from time to time. So that's probably a good thing. Second of all, poetry in particular um, initiates us into the kind of use of language that is startling to the mind and quickening to the senses. In other words, you don't just read it for information. You read it to be startled and to be surprised. And it's a good thing to do the reading of poetry because it will actually help you in your apprehension of Bible reading because much of biblical literature has a strong dependence on and use of metaphor, simile, uh, other various kinds of similitudes and uh, catches of phrase and expressions that are meant to startle the reader. That's what the prophets do is they try to startle the hearers so too with, with poetry. Now, one of the things that I've found with, with uh, Miss Dickinson, as it were, is that I think I'm tracking with her in a poem until the doggone last stanza when she says something that is so opaque to me that I either completely don't get it or I have to sit there and just baffle over it for minutes at a time. And so these brief little uh, poetic chunks, they end up being mind-boggling um, almost like wordles that I have to kind of figure out, what is she saying here? She has this unique tendency to lure you in in the first stanza and then uh, mystify you by the end. So you're not sure if you really got it or not. We're gonna read a couple of her poems here in just a minute. But the other thing that's um, recommended about reading outside your field is simply this. You can read without having to prep something. And for those of us who preach or teach or lecture regularly, it is so nice to read something that I am not going to be accountable for trying to represent later. So in some sense, it doesn't matter if I didn't get it. If she beats me to the punch and I can't understand what she's saying, that's okay, that's fine. Um, I'm along for the ride with Emily Dickinson. Now let me read a couple of poems to you, one of which you'll recognize, the others you probably won't. I think they'll be a little bit less uh, familiar to you unless you've studied her before. The, her, one of her, <clears throat> excuse me, her best known poems is called I'm Nobody, Who Are You? I actually quoted this in my book, Unknown, The Extraordinary Influence of Ordinary Christians, um, because this is a great challenge to me. She says, I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us, don't tell. They'd banish us, you know. How dreary to be somebody, how public like a frog, to tell your name the live long day to an admiring bog. Um, what a great word that she spoke in her day, way before social media, about trying to be somebody. And Dickinson says here that everybody who's out there clamoring for attention, clamoring for likes and shares and retweets and all that, you know what you're like? You're like a bog full of frogs just croaking your own name over and over again. And Dickinson says here there's something really, really freeing about being content to be nobody being content to be faithful to your God, um, the only God, to God, being faithful to him and to be truly yourself as his creature. That is a freeing and, and a wonderful thought. Um, here's another one. This is a, um, 
let's see, this is an interesting one because this one would almost suggest that, um, that she's a believer here. Uh, this is called The Book of Martyrs. Read, sweet how others strove till we are stouter, what they renounced till we are less afraid, how many times they bore the faithful witness till we are helped as if a kingdom cared. Read then a faith that shone upon the faggot that has to do with a fire, by the way, just to clarify. It's not a derogatory term. Clear strains of him the river could not drown. Brave names of men and celestial women passed out of record into renown. It's a beautiful there thought, isn't it, about the martyrs, their impact upon us, how they strove and their striving makes us stouter. Uh, their willingness to go to the burning stake as it were, or to be drowned for uh, the sake of Christ and for the sake of faith. So, certainly seems like a Christian here. Now, there are other poems where you read her and you're pretty sure she's not a Christian, or maybe she doesn't understand the gospel. Um, but this one would certainly seem to indicate that she was greatly and profoundly challenged by the martyrs. One last one here. This one says, I had no time to hate because the grave would hinder me, and life was not so ample I could finish enmity. Nor had I time to love, but since some industry must be, the little toil of love I thought was large enough for me. I did not think I understood that one at first, and this is one that I had to kind of press into to really kind of figure out what exactly she's saying here. But she's comparing um, the finitude of life, the brevity of life, to love and to hatred. Um, hatred first, if you hate, uh, you will run out of life in which you can Expend, expend, expend that, um, that affection. And you will waste your life in doing so, that's the point. And yet if you, if you choose instead to love, then you're going to find that love fills your life, it amplifies your life, and it beautifies your life. So she says, I'm not going to waste any time hating, I'm only going to fill my life with love. All right, all kinds of poems on all kinds of various things here, Emily Dickinson. Uh, if you read outside of your strike zone, I would love to hear about it. What is your strike zone, and what have you read that's outside of your area of expertise? Tell me in the comments. Thanks for checking in. Love you lots. Maybe I'll post a link to this book in the description. See you later.